Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. What do you guys use to edit your photos or your images? What do you use to touch them up? What do you use to just make them better than the way they are right now? Tweaking old photos, tweaking newer photos. What do you use? What software? Uh, you know, I've uh, been using a variety of software over the years. I started really first photo editing software I used was not Photoshop, but uh, Paint Shop Pro. And then over the years, it got kind of progressively worse. Uh, it was then purchased by Corel and hasn't really improved any. Then I just stopped using it. Started using Photo Filter. That's F I L T R E. There's a free and a premium version available. Um, on you know on Mac OS X, I've been using Pixelmator. For the most part, and I'm still kind of getting used to the nuances, but it's it's really really good. For digital photos, though, for the most part, if I want to edit a digital photo, I'll either upload it to my Flickr account and use the Picnic tool. It's amazing. It's extensive. Can undo. It's really really good. So another reason to love Flickr is because of that tool. You can edit the photo online, and all the powerful photo editing tools are right there. Uh, I've also started to use Aperture 2.0 on uh, on OS 10, and that's nice. Picasa makes a great digital photo tweaker, not necessarily editor, but Picasa on both Linux and Windows, and pretty soon they're going to be releasing one for Mac OS 10. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can edit your photos, not just Photoshop. In fact, uh, if you you wanted to go with a Photoshop line, I would have recommended possibly a, like a Photoshop Elements. These are older versions. I don't have the latest versions. They just kind of released them. I, I just don't have them. Don't know that many people at Adobe, unfortunately. Um, use their stuff kind of all the time. There's also now Photoshop Express, which is on the web. Uh, so you can edit your photos on the web again through Adobe. Uh, there are other places you can edit photos on the web too. So it's, it's you know, the web is like right there. I like the one that comes with Flickr though, because I have a Flickr account already. That's where I upload all my most most if not all of my photos. Told you, software is moving to the web. Great photo editing on the web. Nothing to install. Just right there. Ease of use, man. And, and oh yeah, it comes with the Flickr account. So already had that. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. But Moshir, same guy who sent us the uh, Indian food list, has uh, been using Photoshop itself for several years. He wanted to pass along some Photoshop tips for everybody. Number one, when using Photoshop for the first time, see what everything does, from the tools to the little buttons. It'll not only make you move around faster in Photoshop, but it'll also make you experiment a lot more. Uh, that's kind of true. Uh, I would recommend this for anybody in any program. The, the last thing you want to do is use a program and get frustrated with it because it's not doing what you want it to do. Well, have you figured out what it can do? Uh, in many cases, I'll talk to someone and say, well, didn't you know you could do X, Y, and Z? They're like, no. I'm like, dude, it's right there in the menu. It's not you know, hidden or anything. But sometimes that's all it takes is a friend to kind of remind you to just explore a little. You never know what you're going to find. And you've got the program anyway. Number two, always use layers. Layers are one of the most important things you have to remember when using Photoshop. It's very frustrating when you draw something really amazing and let's, on, let's say, a black background. But when you want to change the color of the background, you notice the drawing and the background are on the same layer. So you change the background color and the drawing gets messed up. Remember that using too many layers can also potentially get you confused. Uh, think of layers uh, as separate uh, pieces of the puzzle, if you will. Uh, even though the screen right now is two-dimensional, uh, layers allow you to edit pieces of an image independent of one another. So here's my background, and I, I, I could change this color at any point and that's not going to touch my foreground and then I can go even deeper and add more layers and I can have oh I can have a million and one different layers of course that's probably a theoretical number uh, and then when I'm done tweaking because I can tweak this independently and do this over here and I can move this over here and arrange that and send it to the top or send it to the bottom I can arrange all these uh, layers in various orders but when I do save it it will flatten the image so that it's one because you can't have multiple layers within like a JPEG. You can't have multiple layers when it's in like a Photoshop file though. Number three, name your layers. I know uh, naming your layers can seem useless sometimes, but when working on a big project, it's very helpful. It helps you find a particular layer very fast because in you'll 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 be able to arrange your layers and manage your layers in this little uh, you know floating window, this uh, I guess floating toolbox if you will. Uh, you can just 
rename them, name it something useful, background, you know, face, text, you know, headline, and then that will help you, uh, again, manage those layers. You can't, by the way, if you save out like that file with many layers as a JPEG, you can't open that JPEG again and get back to the layers. Once it's a JPEG, it's flat. You can't, it's, that's it. You, once it's been flattened, you can't unflatten it without pressing the undo button as long as you just did it. So keep that in mind. Number four, use groups. Groups are little folders that you can put as many layers as you want into. Many people don't even know that groups exist. This helps you organize the layers very quickly. Remember your name to name your groups too. Number five, learn the shortcuts. Learning shortcuts is key, haha, <laughs> pun intended, I guess, to becoming a fast and efficient Photoshop user. Of course, you will not be able to learn all the shortcuts right away, but after a while, try to remember the shortcuts for the tools you use most of the time. This will make you finish stuff unbelievably faster. Number six, filters. Filters are one of the greatest features of Photoshop. Try out the filters to see what they do. Play with the settings. I like to use a sharpen filter a lot after times. It gives my images a crispy look, but only use filters when you feel it's necessary. Number seven, experiment. Experimenting is something everyone should do. When starting with graphics, you might read tutorials, which is great, or watch tutorials. Uh, you really learn a lot. Uh, Ice Flow Studios is a, a good guy. He posts on YouTube, and he's got his own website as well. Really friendly uh, person to the rest of us, too. But you can learn a lot from uh, tutorials and just trying and finding your own style. Um, you know, don't, don't be afraid. There's always an undo button. Uh, you can always back up, or in the case of uploading your photos to a site where you can edit it online, nine times out of ten, you've got a backup right there. Um, you know, I've already done a video on the Huey device, which is really good for people who deal with digital photography. Uh, just look up my um, the Huey video that I did. That's H U E Y, or come into the chat room and type in what is Huey, and it will respond with the appropriate link. Uh, my email address is chrisatperillo.com. Maybe you've got specific Photoshop tip or photo editing tips in general. I mean, I know we can only take so many of those, so try to be creative with the way that you compile your list of, of tips and tricks. Um, of course, you're also welcome to swing by the website. We're uh, typically talking tech. Some people ask me for software advice. I don't always respond because they tend to ask me, like, every five minutes the same question. And every time I turn to the chat room, inevitably they're talking about Firefox or some kind of computer configuration that they have, or gaming, every time, it doesn't matter. Like seriously, the chat room's open all the time. Like right now, it's open right now. And it would be boost of you to stop by, uh, just to, you know, if you want, just you know, say hello, be nice, tell us how you found us, and you know that you're a friendly kind of person. We'd love to have you there, so what are you waiting for? We're at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.